Hey guys, welcome to Strong with Raj. No nonsense strength training. So this is a quick little video of my latest workout and I'm still going at 140, 150 kg type. After these squats, I did some bench press, which is not the part of the video. But I thought I'll speak about something that has been on my mind for a while. Um, if you watch the whole video, you will see that I have not used a belt in my session. I use belt and also not use them quite often. But I must say that I use a belt every single time. Now you must be confused what I'm saying. So what I'm saying is, sometimes I don't use belt, sometimes I use the belt, and I use the best belt all the time. And by that I mean I use my internal belt all the time. So for those of you who are not sure whether to wear belt or not and how to do it, I am going to explain you the whole thing about it. You must understand, I have this concept which you should understand, is that there are two types of belt. Internal belt and external belt. I don't have to tell you what is external belt. In this case, it is a weightlifting belt. And uh, normally they are three to four inches wide. And uh, they've got a lot of holes in them and whatnot. And there is a whole group of people who are perhaps against using the belt and there are people who are using the belt and they divide themselves. I don't really care. I do get a fair bit of a heat uh, from others on comments that why I'm not using a belt and I will hurt my back one day. To those people, I just have one little thing to say is that I know how to use my internal belt. And it is important to use your internal belt as much as possible. And also, it is good to use an external belt. So, I will do my best to not keep this talk too technical, but I think it is important to understand when it comes to using the belt. Let's talk about the internal belt. Basically, they are your abdominal muscles. Now, when we say abdominal, you will go straight into abs, which is correct, but there are quite a few different types of abdominal muscles. Transverse abdominis, which is quite a deep uh, layer of muscle. Then we have rectus abdominis. It is uh, slung between the rib and pubis. And external oblique muscles, as it says, is external and it's oblique and internal oblique muscle. So there is a crisscross going on. Why? Because where our stomach is, it is an empty cavity. There is no um, bone structure in the front. So we have muscles and they go in all direction just to keep us nice and steady. Or you can say to stabilize us. Now, when you are squatting, when a heavy bar is in the back, it is extremely important that you are stable. This stability is very important for to ensure that you don't don't hurt your back or more specifically your spinal cord if you think of the anatomy especially of the back everything is to keep the spinal cord safe in our back also we have muscles right behind where our front abs are let's say i i actually think of them as my abs at the back uh, they are quadratus muscle, psoas major, psoas minor, iliacus, and so on. So these are the muscles which you can collectively call in popular fitness culture the core. I don't like to call it that because it doesn't really represent what it is. It is important to know that the muscles of abdominal wall and the muscles of posterior of the abdominal is very important now this is just one part of it i want you to imagine your car with the tires which are not full of air and there's hardly any pressure okay and go and drive you can drive for some time but if the pressure is not not enough you will not be able to drive much and uh, you know what will happen you won't go too far and the rubber of the tire will just disintegrate. But if you pump the air at the right pressure, which I think is 32 PSI in Australia, the tire pressure is so good that it 
keeps the whole car stable and it protects what does it protect it protects what's inside those tubes the metal wheel what do you call those things uh, anyway and that is equivalent of our spinal cord so there are two parts one is that you have muscles and second is how to tighten them and this is where the concept of breathing comes breathing when we talk about it we do have to talk about what is bracing bracing is a concept where you tighten your abdominal muscles take a long deep breath hold the breath now there is a technique called well salva method we will not go into that it's not uh, in the scope of this video but valsalva is used very commonly in powerlifting and it is quite simple but all you need to understand is that you have to tighten your ab muscles all around take a big deep breath and pressurize your abs especially on the sides not front not pushing your abs out but just creating a all around pressure like a tight column if you then poke the sides of your abs with your thumb and if you feel tight you are braced you are now ready to squat so this is the way you are using your internal belt by tightening your muscles taking a big big amount of breath and holding it this is how you use your internal belt and you always use this internal belt regardless of whether you're using external belt or not now let's say that you want to put an external belt so you put a belt on and you do the same thing so what's happening here is you are wearing an external belt only so that you have something to push against something to feel something to respond to to actually use your internal belt which is all of your abdominal muscles and posterior wall muscles and bra and bracing all this so if someone tells you that uh, without using the external belt the weightlifting belt you will hurt your back it's not true because you first have to learn how to get rigid how to get tight in your abdominal muscle and the process i have just explained on top of that it is very good practice to use an external weightlifting belt i use it a lot and there are many times i don't use it so that i get used to of feeling it what it is like to brace without a weightlifting belt so when i'm in the region of 140 160 150 i prefer not to use the belt i don't use belt at all when i am doing bench press i don't find any reason to do so because my whole back is against a big piece of bench and i have enough to respond to but i do use my belt quite regularly when i'm doing overhead press for some reason it just works for me and i use it for squats and i use it uh, for deadlift as well on and off same thing as with squats i it's 50 50 but with overhead press i use it quite regularly quite regularly but there are times as well when i don't there are times when i start my workout and i practice breathing and i hold my breath and keep myself really upright push out outwards and just tighten there's one very good cue that is very useful for most people and i use it as well it's uh it's like pushing your rib cage down into your abs rib cage push your rib cage down into your abs so it, it is almost impossible for anyone to squat a moderately heavy weight without tightening it is in our nature to tighten ourselves when we are about to do something which is which takes a lot of effort or is very heavy you would know this from movies when they say brace for impact 
Brace for impact is exactly what we do when we are about to be challenged by something which is dangerous or difficult. We take a big deep breath and we push the car. Same thing. This is a, a survival mechanism. This is kind of a reflex that we all have. And we should be able to sharpen the skill to be able to lift heavy weights. So it is good not to be totally dependent on a weightlifting external belt. But it is good to use it. But it's even best and it's better to actually use your natural internal belt. One more point that I would like to add is that when you take a big deep breath, push your chest up and press your ribs down, tighten the belt, you are creating what is known as intra-abdominal pressure. Now think of that car tire that I just talked about. If the car tire is inflated to 32 PSI or whatever it might be in your country, you are creating a pressure. That pressure you need to create in your abdominal. It's called intra-abdominal pressure. I think I've been squatting from 7-8 years, but it is not possible to be comfortable with that feeling. This is the problem that I have with all other exercises, especially the ones where you are in a machine and sitting down. Because you're sitting down on your butt, your body just imagines and assumes that you're in a resting position and you almost forget to brace yourself. And if you have a heavy bar on your weight, it is impossible not to brace. Two things which are beautiful about squat is that when it is on your back, you will naturally get into a balanced position. So inherently, you're teaching yourself how to stand straight and not lose your balance. This is very important for older people. Secondly, when you have a heavish, moderately heavy bar on your back, you will tighten up. You will brace. And then if you have a coach who can teach you or if you are willing to learn, then you can get better on embracing or bracing, I should say. Brace really hard and it has to be uncomfortable. I don't think so that there are lifters who will say that I brace and I'm quite comfortable doing it. We are not designed to be comfortable in that position. And why would you? Because you've got some heavy stuff you're lifting. And I can tell you there are days that I cannot brace. There are some reps, sets I do where I don't brace properly. And then immediately the next set when I brace properly, it feels million dollar. It feels such a big difference. Big, huge difference if I don't brace. And there are times I'm not able to. There are times I'm fatigued. There are times that I've done few sessions in a row and this third or fourth session, it just doesn't happen. And that is one way of listening to your body that if you're not able to bring yourself to that responsiveness of tightening your abs and bracing, then you are fatigued or not ready for this, this kind of exercise. Anyway, guys, I thought it was very important for me to express to you the importance of belt and what actually happens, how to use it and what is an external belt and internal belt. I really hope you enjoyed this talk, this video. I think the video wasn't very important. I did 140 kg, 150 kg. It was a short, sharp workout without the belt. And I thought I will talk about this topic. Anyway, guys, um, thank you for watching. Please like, subscribe, and I'll see you next time.